it's worth saying the resurrection has remarkable effects. According to the prophets of the Book of Mormon, the prophet Jacob, Nephi's little brother, says, wherefore it must needs be, he says, an infinite atonement, save it should be an infinite atonement, this corruption could not put on incorruption. Wherefore the first judgment which came upon man must needs have remained to an endless duration. I take it the first judgment there is, thou shalt surely die, right? The first thing spoken as a judgment on human beings. So the first judgment, if without this infinite atonement, uh, must needs have remained to an endless duration. And if so, this flesh must have laid down to rot and to crumble to its mother earth to rise no more. But then Jacob exclaims, Oh, the wisdom of God is mercy and grace. For behold, if the flesh should rise no more, our spirits must have become subject to that angel who fell from before the presence of the eternal God and became the devil to rise no more. And our spirits must have become like unto him. And we become devils, angels to a devil, to be shut out from the presence of our God and to remain with the father of lies. That's powerful. If it weren't for a resurrection, we'd have no hope even in spiritual matters, mm -hmm. it seems, right? Uh, what Christ works out there in rising from the dead saves us not only from death, but it's tied up also with how we're saved from sin.